This video will discuss the basic idea behind cluster analysis and give some business examples of its application. Business not necessarily meaning a commercial enterprise, but any kind of organizational practice. Cluster analysis is concerned with grouping. And this is not grouping columns of data, but grouping rows of data. So individual observations, records, or instances into groups or clusters or segments based on similarity. So the instances, the lines of data that are more similar will be grouped together. And the basic idea is that members of a cluster are more similar to each other than they are to members of other clusters. Now, why an organization might want to do cluster analysis? Uh, two main purposes are one, perhaps uh, describing the data by grouping it together. So it's a way of looking at the overall data. You might have a million lines of data, but if you can group them into five major categories, that gives much more understanding of this big mass you're looking at. Another purpose is for pre-processing. So maybe you ultimately have a prediction goal, say perhaps uh, with some characteristics of customers, but one in order to increase your predictions, you group them into customer segments because you might find that one of the four customer segments you come up with has some predictive value in ultimately determining perhaps sales or uh, return a business. Cluster analysis is a type of unsupervised learning. With supervised learning, you have a true and f or false value that you're trying to predict, such as amount of sales or number of customers. Uh, but for unsupervised learning, there is no true or false. Uh, so it could be maybe uh, whether patients will recover from a disease or not might be something predicted with supervised learning but maybe you're trying to group patients on severity and nature of illness and you're finding types of patients. Well, what kind of types of patients are there? There's not one way, one right way to do it. There's many ways you can look at it and that's the nature of unsupervised learning. There's no right answer against which to compare the final results. Now, it's not a question of whether you've got it right or wrong, but rather you're looking at, is your cluster solution, is your grouping useful or not? Does it have meaning that makes sense that could be translated into some useful application? Uh, but it's very crucial to understand it requires human intelligence to determine how good or appropriate the cluster solutions are. So now we go to some business examples. And again, these are general organization examples where an organization might want to use cluster analysis. The first uh, is in hospitality and marketing. And the idea here is you have a hotel and a hotel is trying to segment its clients. Um, and the hotel might have a lot of information from past clients, such as the purpose of their stay, was it for business or tourism, their nationality, uh, the source of the booking, do they book directly with a hotel or do they go through uh, some travel agency, uh, then what is their satisfaction level after their stay? Are they returning guests? Is this the first time they've come? Are they frequent or not? Do they have special needs, such as was it a honeymoon? Was it a particularly long stay? Uh, then cancellation status is this a customer that eventually canceled before they stayed or not then average booking amounts like how much uh, money do they actually spend uh, in their booking so th this is a lot of data a hotel might have about its clients and let's say it has uh, 10,000 clients or so uh, from the last year and the cluster analysis would try to identify types of of clients now, some obvious things are business travel versus leisure travel. Well, that's something you can actually ask them directly. You don't, you don't need cluster analysis to tell you something so obvious. But perhaps when you apply cluster analysis techniques, this is just an example, 
it might come up with an identification that you have maybe three kinds of customers. You have business customers that are going there being paid by their organization. You have uh, leisure customers that are on vacation and they're just paying on their own. But then maybe it finds that there is this business leisure customer category where you have people who first came to your hotel and found out about your hotel based on business travel, but they liked it so much that when it was time for their vacation, they brought their families back. Uh, and they took advantage of the points, loyalty points that you have. And knowing the hotel, liking the location, they brought a family to enjoy the experience. Now, suppose your cluster analysis tells you that there's this third kind of category that you had never thought about. Then suddenly identifying them, you realize that you could convert a lot of your business customers to be leisure uh, travelers and so you can now create marketing campaigns that prepare special packages to increase the conversion to this kind of customer category that you, you had not really recognized this example is from project management where one of the primary goals is to predict or to determine or to assure that a product a project succeeds and does not fail. And a successful project is generally one that not only accomplishes its goals, but does so on time and within the budget uh, allocated. And here in this example, our goal is not to predict if the project will succeed or fail, but is trying to provide resources to increase the chances of success. And uh, this is based on a scholarly article cited here. And the, the idea is that there are different kinds of resources or efforts that are needed for different kinds of projects. So for example, there might be some projects that need a lot of, of physical presence where it might involve a lot of uh, airline travel. So the members of the international project team come together every month, whereas there might be other projects where just online meetings are fully sufficient for the full period of the project. There might be other resources where perhaps the, your organization has all the skills needed, but there are some projects that might need very specialized skills. And so you would need to partner with a consultant company that provides people with those skills. And that becomes a huge part of the project. Uh, there might be now, the obvious things are amount of budget, amount of time, but looking at these different resources or efforts, cluster analysis might find that there are certain projects that need certain combinations of resources that you had not realized. Uh, for example, you might find there are projects that need um, physical travel, uh, but to not need people from outside. You might find that there are some that face-to-face -face is okay, but you need to hire outside consultants. And perhaps your project, your cluster analysis finds uh, four or five different categories of projects based on this. And the advantage of this kind of solution is that you can now uh, hire or train or appoint project managers who specialize on these combinations of resources. So they are not necessarily going to manage the entire project as a whole, but their job is just to organize these resources and to specialize and optimize them. Then they work with other project managers who are in charge of specific projects and the, the resource managers then provide those resources to increase the success of all the other projects. So that would be an example from project management. In finance, one of the major concerns is developing portfolios of products, of financial products, because investments are risky and you can't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to find um, multiple 
investment types and some succeed, some fail. But one of the major concerns is that some kinds of investments uh, have different risk and return ratios, uh, pretty much always uh, riskier uh, investments. That's those that are highly volatile that can succeed greatly or fail greatly. Uh, they tend to have much higher returns uh, over time, whereas more stable, more uh, certain investments, those that the risk, I mean, you're not going to, you're not likely to lose that much, but you're not going to gain spectacularly. The return is usually much lower uh, than the riskier ones on average uh, long term. Uh, but then the factors that determine these include uh, the nature of the investments, such as are they based on cash equivalents? Uh, are they stocks or bonds? Are they uh, based on commodities? Are they futures? Uh, are they based on domestic uh, companies? Or, or are they, do they involve a lot of international companies? Is there gov are there government bonds involved? So many different characteristics determine these profiles of portfolios. And a lot of this is well known in the uh, finance world, but with new products uh, developing, with new companies, with new types of industries, it's you can't always assume that what existed in the past will exist in the future. And so cluster analysis is a useful tool in finance to uh, understand the different kinds of products you have and the more characteristics that you give of these different financial products, then the more cluster analysis can find uh, products that are very similar uh, based on maybe their risk and return ratio, based on uh, uh, the source such as domestic, international. And this can help financial portfolio managers to determine clusters of financial products which become the portfolios that they re recommend uh, to their clients. In economics, the determination of industries is very important so for governments to understand the nature of the economy that they are managing. And industries are continually evolving an industry generally is not just one type of company that produces the product, but it includes all the suppliers that lead, produce materials that lead to that product and includes uh, the retail that sells it up to the consumers that actually use them, whether they're uh, private consumers, individuals, or commercial consumers. But with the internet and with uh, many things changing the world, industries are constantly evolving. I mean, one example is um, perhaps with Amazon, which is well known as uh, one of the leading retailers in the world, but it is less known in, in the general public as the, the leading cloud services provider uh, because of all the e-commerce infrastructure they have. They've been able to develop resources to provide internet uh, storage and computing infrastructure for other companies and there's other companies that uh, could follow a similar pattern so suddenly an industry that is not just retail online retail but also including infrastructure provision to other companies this becomes a very different type of company uh, that what has been traditionally imagined so when a government tries to identify what companies make up an industry, they look at things such as uh, what the products and services are, who the consumers are, again, whether they're business or com uh, commercial, and what kind of this, uh, individual or uh, commercial consumers they are. Uh, they look at the raw materials needed. They look at, uh, are these mainly private organizations or are they non-profits such as education, healthcare, and so on. And with cluster analysis, they can analyze these different characteristics of 
companies and products and a general economic activity, identify industries that go together. And the advantage of identifying industries is that the government can then determine policies to incentivize industries to develop. Uh, and this is whether through investments, through invest, uh, in direct investments in the organizations or building infrastructure that organizations need to, to flourish uh, or taxation policies know under better understanding what is actually going on to know what the effects of taxes are in uh, promoting or hindering the economic activity and so on so with those examples um, you should have a better example a better idea of the potential for cluster analysis to help in organizations developing some of their goals, understanding uh, their clients or their, or their stakeholders and being able to better serve them.